Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video on the channel guys. So what I have for you guys today is another episode of the Championship Roundup and uh, we have some massive games that we have to talk over and a lot of decisions actually that went on in the weekend which could have some pretty huge implications for the rest of the season guys. So uh, I am actually recording this video before all the games have taken place. Of course there is a game taking place tonight when you guys will be watching this on the Monday night. But the reason I am bringing this video out before that game is taking place is because I want to stick to the schedule of getting these championship round of videos out on the Monday. So, uh, of course, we do have Preston against Newcastle, which is coming up tonight. So, that's an interesting one. Make sure you let me know in the comments down below what you guys think will happen in that one. But uh, in terms of the action that we have seen this weekend, we had quite a lot go on. And now, guys, there is only six more points to play for in the championship season. So, it really is starting to heat up now at both the top and bottom of the championship. So, what I'd love to know from you guys is how did your team perform at the weekend let me know in the comments down below. I'll be very interested to know. As well as that, what do you think was the goal of the weekend? As well as that, what did you think was the result of the weekend? I'll be revealing what I thought they were at the end of the video, but uh, I will include your comments on screen now. So if any of you guys did successfully manage to predict any of the scorelines going on this weekend, I will include your comment on screen now. So fair play to everyone who did correctly guess a score prediction this week. I think this week I managed to get one of my predictions correct, which isn't too bad going for me, you know. I'd say that this week probably was one of the most unpredictable weekends of championship football we've seen in a long time, really. A lot of the scorelines we had, not a lot of people were expecting them. So, fair play to everyone who got one right. So, guys, our first game that we have to talk over was the one which took place on Friday night and which could have been Brighton's, actually, crowning game in the championship, but that was not to be the case. In the end, Norwich managed to walk away with the 2-0 victory, of course. Victory in this one for Brighton would have secured them for winning the championship, but that has been slightly delayed with Norwich getting the 2-0 victory and uh, I did actually say in my predictions video that I didn't think Brighton would win this game because I thought that coming off such a high that they have been recently after securing promotion to the Premier League, I don't really think all of their players will be, you know, solely focused on football anymore. They'll be thinking about next season already, in my opinion, and uh, that was sort of brought to the forefront in this game. I mean, Alex Pritchard definitely had the standout performance in this game from Norwich City. I mean, in the end, the goals were for Norwich City. Norwich managed to win this game without having a shot on target, which is uh, pretty mental considering they won the game 2-0, but uh, Alex Alex Pritchard it was who created both the goals I'll say. He hit the post with both of them, one hit the crossbar, one hit the post and they were both so identical the goals that went in. They both came off David Stockdale as an own goal and uh, in the end David Stockdale the goalkeeper scored two on goals to give Norwich the victory. In the end Norwich probably deserved it as well so fair play to Norwich who have looked very decent at home lately. And then into our next game guys we had a London derby taking place between Brentford and QPR and in the end the home team Brentford managed to take advantage with the three one victory over their London rivals and uh, in this one once again I don't really think QPR can have too many complaints in this one I generally just think that in this one Brentford were the better side and uh, it's been quite a common theme really lately especially in the past few two months or say Brentford's home form actually has been very good it seems to be their creative players really come out and shine when they are playing at home so if they can translate that into next season Brentford could be in for a good one and uh, the pick of the goals had to go to Jota for this one his first goal was absolutely sublime. He took a touch, he took the ball out of the air, beat like two or three players dribbling into the box and then finished it wonderfully. Honestly, it was such a glorious goal. You guys are going to have to check it out if you've not already seen it. Fantastic goal from a fantastic player and uh, I actually do believe that his contract is out at the end of the season so whoever gets, who, wherever Jota ends up next season, they're going to be happy to have him. And then for our next game guys, we had a massive game for Bristol City going on at the bottom of the championship. We had them coming up against Barnsley of course, Lee Johnson's former side, and in the end, Bristol City managed to take full advantage with the 3-2 victory. Now, this victory for Bristol City pretty much secures their championship status for next season. Of course, it's not official, but they are currently six points above the relegation zone, so with two games to go, it is looking incredibly unlikely that Bristol City will be going down. You know, one point would officially do it, but even saying that, I don't think Blackburn are going to win both of their remaining games, so Bristol City are pretty much secure in the championship for next season, but uh, 
it, it took a bit. It took a big task for them to actually do this. They had to come back from behind twice against this Barnsley side to get the 3-2 victory in the end. And uh, I think what that shows more than anything, it shows that, that Bristol City have got a bit of grit about them now. You know, something which we've not associated with Bristol City for pretty much the entirety of the season. You know, of course Barnsley weren't helped in this one. I think it was uh, Roberts was forced to go off at half time after an injury he'd sustained for this one, and the defensive line never really looked to, re to recover after that. And you could see a couple of blunders being made in the second half which led to some of the Bristol City goals but in the end Bristol City have taken a massive step towards championship survival that should do it for them now. And for another team who has taken a massive step towards staying in the championship for next season that was of course Burton Albion for getting the 2-1 victory over Leeds United and uh, oh my word everything just seems to be going wrong for Leeds at the pivotal point of the season I mean how long now have Leeds been in the playoffs but of course last weekend we saw them drop out of the playoffs and this game really was the game that I know a lot of Leeds fans were expecting them to rectify the mistakes they made last time out, go and get the victory against Burton Albion, who were battling it out at the bottom of the championship. But that just didn't happen in this one. I thought Burton stood to their game plan excellent in this one, you know. Leeds had the more possession in this game, which was to be expected, really. But for large majorities of the first half, Burton were very solid in their shape. They weren't allowing Leeds to break through with many opportunities, and they were frustrating them for large majorities of the game. And then in the second half, they just turned up the pressure a little bit on Leeds. So Dell scored a fantastic goal for them and uh, Knightley as well he got a goal on the counter attack for Le for Burton Albion that put them 2-0 up Barley then got a goal back for Leeds but in the end it wasn't enough they came very close to equalising in the last moments of the game I think Kimar Roof had an attempt cleared off the line there's a whole goal mouth scramble I don't know how it didn't end up in the back of the net for Leeds but Burton managed to take full advantage of this one. They are now as well six points above the relegation zone so Burton Albion are pretty much going to be playing in the championship next season so fair play to them but Leeds it's going to take a massive task now for them to get in the playoffs you know with other teams up there looking like they're in a fine bit of form at the moment Leeds are without doubt going to need to win their next two games. And talking about teams who are in form in the playoffs at this point in time that is of course Fulham who just seem to be blowing everyone completely out of the water at this point in time with an ecstatic 4-1 victory over Huddersfield Town. What a result this was for Fulham and what a performance it was for Fulham. And I was quite disappointed really with Huddersfield in this one because I was expecting, you know, two juggernauts of the championship this season coming up against each other. I was expecting a real fierce battle of these two going towards each other. I was expecting it to be quite tight as well, but in the end it was probably anything but that. I mean, Huddersfield managed to take the lead after just four minutes after they were given a penalty. But after that, they just seemed to shrink back into their shell and were really disappointed actually after that. And Fulham just completely took them to the sword and some of their fast attacking play was really on show in this one. Some of the goals they the goal that Johansson scored the first one was absolutely fantastic. His second one came from a Huddersfield blunder at the back. So a really disappointing one for Huddersfield. But Fulham really seemed to be going into the playoffs with a big sense of momentum. And then for a team who is really here and miss who is currently in the playoffs. That is of course Reading who did actually lose to Nottingham Forest by three goals to two. And uh, this game was once again a game which not probably many people actually saw coming. So fair play to all the people who were predicting a Nottingham Forest to victory in this game and honestly I think it was a deserved victory for Nottingham Forest. I mean so many times this season really I'd say recently we've seen Reading's defence really be weak away from home. I don't know what it is but whenever Reading seems to have an away match the defence just seems to absolutely crumble. I mean we saw it against Preston North End, we saw it at Norwich when they conceded seven, we've seen it countless other times this season and it was once again on show in this game against Nottingham Forest and going into the plus for Reading conceding goals away from home surely has to be a concern you know, of course, with them going to have to play an away leg in the playoffs. But uh, Nottingham Forest in this game, I thought they were the better side. As Son Belonga showed what sort of a championship striker he is and how pivotal he could actually be for anyone in the championship. He managed to grab two fantastic goals for Nottingham Forest and Reading just looked really limp at the back. I couldn't really believe what I was seeing. They had a bit of a resurgence late on with Jan Kermigan growing back two goals for them. In the end, it wasn't enough. This could be a huge three points in keeping Forest in the championship. And then for our next game, 
evening guys, we had Rotherham United 1, Ipswich Town 0 and fair play to Rotherham, they finally managed to get a victory after just countless amounts of defeat after defeat after defeat, this must just be fair play to Rotherham for finally getting a victory back in the championship because their relegation was secured a long time ago but I actually think I said in my predictions video it would be the most Ipswich Town thing to go ahead and beat Newcastle one week and then lose to Rotherham the next. This Ipswich's last week in the championship has just summed up their season completely but uh, to be fair to Ipswich they did make a lot of changes for this game I think they made nine changes to that same squad who beat Ipswich who beat Newcastle sorry so obviously Mick McCarthy was experimenting a little bit with the squad but even so I mean to be losing to Rotherham who are rock bottom of the championship is a major disappointment to them and for our next game guys we had Sheffield Wednesday who came up against Derby County and now a team which almost looks to have secured their place in the championship playoffs for this season now is Sheffield Wednesday. They seem to have come into form at just the right point in the season as they have now won their last five matches. So fair play to Sheffield Wednesday. You know, I've been quite critical of them for the entirety of the season by saying, you know, they've been quite inconsistent. But recently they've been putting together a very consistent run and they look to be going into the playoffs with a nice sense of momentum. So Sheffield Wednesday fans must be feeling a bit confident going into the playoffs at this point in time. But uh, in terms of how this game went against Derby, I actually thought that it was quite a level game in the end, actually. I mean, uh, Darren Bent gave Derby County the lead in the second half, but with goals from Fletcher and Hooper, managed to secure the victory for for Sheffield Wednesday. Derby were a little bit unfortunate in this one. They had a couple of other chances where they could have scored. I know Anita had a chance. Uh, Will Hughes had a very good chance as well. He just couldn't bury it in the end. But Sheffield Wednesday, they seem to have a knack Sheffield Wednesday of just about getting over the line. They've won a lot of games recently by a one goal margin. But that's serving them well at the moment. And they're now up to fourth in the championship. And then for the, our next game guys, we have a result which pretty much all but secures Wigan Athletics fate for the rest of the season. With them drawing 0-0 to Cardiff, Wigan now are pretty much relegated to League One. So commiserations to all the Wigan fans who do watch this series and uh, overall I, I do feel a bit for Wigan really because it's definitely not been the season that they've wanted. You know, they've had like three managerial changes this season and uh, nothing just seems to have clicked for Wigan this season so I do really feel for them and uh, they had quite a few opportunities against this Cardiff side which they just couldn't take and uh, that's been the story of Wigan's season really. They just couldn't take their chances and uh, they came up against this Cardiff of City side who going forward I didn't think were great in this one I thought they were quite poor but defensively they stuck to their game plans for Wigan to stay in the championship it would take them to win their next two matches and for Birmingham to lose their next two matches and considering that Wigan's next two matches are against Reading and Leeds that just doesn't look very likely however from one team that looks to be going down to League One to another which still is in with a fighting chance we had Wolves who came up against Blackburn and in the end this one finished as a goalless draw and uh, this one definitely wasn't the game of the weekend. I, I think this pretty much sums up a bore draw. Chances in this game were definitely at a premium and you could just tell really that both of these sides were teams in the lower region of the table. I mean, quality just wasn't on show in this game and quite a disappointing one actually from Blackburn Rovers' perspective because this was a massive opportunity for them this weekend to go ahead and climb out of the relegation zone. Of course, they've not managed to do that. However, with Birmingham losing to Aston Villa, Blackburn do still have a fighting chance of staying in the championship. They're currently cut two points adrift of relegation so what I'd love to know from you guys is who do you think is going down this season? Will it be Blackburn? Will it be Birmingham? Or will it be Nottingham Forest? Let me know down below. And then for our last game to talk over guys we had the big derby going on this weekend between Aston Villa and Birmingham. It was a massive game, loads of people were hyping up this game and in the end did it disappoint? Yeah, it did disappoint. I'm not going to lie, this was a really bad match actually but in the end it was Gabi Agban Lahore who managed to secure the victory for Aston Villa after what was a very dull match in my opinion you know for a massive derby to be taking place once again chances in this game were at a premium and uh, Birmingham now actually find themselves in an incredibly tricky situation under Harry Redknapp they're only two points off the relegation zone and what I find most interesting out of anything actually is that Aston Villa's next game is against Blackburn Rovers so 
Birmingham fans now need Aston Villa to win their next match if they are going to secure clear of relegation. So, you know, maybe we could see like Aston Villa make 11 changes for that game. It's going to be interesting. But in this game, really, I thought that Birmingham probably would have taken a point from how the general flow of the game went. I thought that they would have been happy with the point, really. But the only bit of quality came from a bit of a goal mouth scramble with Agbon Lahot in the end managing to bury the goal. I think that's actually his first goal since February 2016. That is absolutely crazy and it's crazy that it came in this game as well it just sums up Birmingham season really Birmingham fans are you now really fearing the drop let me know down below it's going to be very tight come the end of the season so there you have it guys that will wrap it up for this episode of the championship roundup so make sure you do leave a comment in the comments down below as to how your team performed this weekend I'll be very interested to know so first of all guys for my goal of the weekend I'm going to give it to Jota for his goal against QPR it was just absolutely sublime the technique he showed the pace he showed and the composure he showed was all on display for that goal so my goal of the weekend is going to be Jutta and then for my result of the weekend there are actually quite a few that I could give this one to so it'd be very interesting to know as to what your guys result of the weekend was but myself I'm going to give it to Fulham for beating Huddersfield by four goals to one of course these are two sides who could potentially be meeting in the playoffs so for Fulham to have that psychological advantage over Huddersfield now by beating them 4-1 could be massive come the end of the season so like I said guys that will now wrap it up for this video so if you have enjoyed make sure you do leave a like it is always massively appreciated as well as that make sure you subscribe for regular championship content and check out all the links in the description down below but apart from that guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all in the next one